How'd you arrive at the decision to come sign with the Falcons after starting with the Lions last year? And uh, how do you see yourself fitting into the to the uh, operation over there as they get started uh, putting the defense back together? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, honestly, you know, I, I, I kind of reached out to to the Falcons because I just felt like it would, you know, be a great opportunity for myself. Um, just knowing kind of, you know, some of the coaches that are over here, you know, played against, you know, uh, Arthur Smith uh, offense the last three years, um, you know, a dominant offense. You know, they've been you just just running the ball, throwing the ball, you know, having one of the most efficient offenses when he was at the Titans. And then you kind of go over to um, the defense, you know, led by Dean Pease. Um, you know, not enough great things you can say about Dean Pease. He's been a great defensive coordinator in this league for a long time. You know, he's coached a lot of great safeties. Um, and just the, you know, the scheme that he runs, you know, it involves um, the safeties a lot, you know. You need a lot of good, you know, playmakers at safeties. You got to be smart. You got to be able to disguise. You got to be able to kind of do a lot of different things. And I just thought for myself it would be a good fit. And then um, obviously had the, the relationship with uh, Marquise Williams um, over in uh, Detroit. And um, just mm-hmm. he kind of just – just popped it off a little bit for me. And um, I was happy that we was able to come to agreement. And um, I'm just excited, excited for the opportunity. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's an opportunity for me to go out there, you know, play good football, um, do what I can do, um, earn a role on the team, and just kind of see where it goes from there. Thank you. No problem. Tori from The Athletic. Hi, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for talking to us today. I, I really wanted to to talk to you about, you know, you, you said you reached out about coming mm-hmm. to the Falcons. And this is a very interesting situation that you're kind of entering into because it really does feel like the safety position is being rebuilt from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so what excites you about out that challenge, especially considering mm-hmm. that, you know, you're more than likely going to be one of the, the main veterans in this group now. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you say, you know, kind of built from the ground up, and, you know, a lot of people want to talk about, you know, rebuild, but I mean, it's, it's some it's some, it's some great and, and good veterans on this team, you know, you think about it, you know, it's just a lot of good players everywhere, offense, defense, you know, special teams, and, you know, I'm just excited about coming here, you know, playing for this great city, playing for this organization, and, you know, just doing everything I can to be the best player that I can be, you know, and to help, you know, like you said, being a veteran, you know, one of the things about, you know, being in this league, I've been here for a long time, um, but, you know, I've had experience, you know, and when I say experience, not just on the football field, but just dealing with, you know, the pressures of being in the NFL, you know, having, you know, the pressure of always the spotlight kind of being on you and, um, I'm at the point where I feel like, you know, I can help younger kids and younger players being able to be, you know, like a leader, a mentor, um, because that's what has kept me in this league for this long. Um, Just having great mentors, you know, I always talk about, you know, kind of the same guys, but, you know, like Devin McCourty, Matt Slater, you know, Jason McCourty, you know, Tom, Gerard Mayo, just guys that I have extensively looked up to and still reach out to this day to find, you know, to get advice on different, you know, just situations. And I feel like I'm at a point where I can pass some of that wisdom down um, that those guys gave me. So, I mean, just excited, just excited about the opportunity and just just really looking forward to it. And I wanted to go back to what you're talking about with being excited to to play in Dean P's just scheme and just working with him in general. Have you met him prior to this? Have you had a chance to to chat with him? Or is was, was it just kind of like from the outside looking in, you really respected that guy? <laughs> well, it was from the outside looking in. And then I, I reached out to, um, before leaving the contract and everything, I, I reached out to Logan Ryan, um, guy who played in DMP system for uh, when he was in the Titans for, for three years. Um, and I just, just kind of asked about Dean, like, and the first thing he told me, he said, you're going to love him. He said, just forget, like, the football. He said, you're going to love him for the man that he is. And then he said, and football-wise, he said, bro, like, it's the most fun I had in the defense while playing in the National Football League. He just said, you're able to do a little bit of everything. You're blitzing, you're covering, you're in a deep part of the field. And I'm at the point in my career where that, that's what I want to do. I want to do, a, you know, a little bit of everything. Keep the quarterback guessing, you know. Being able to play the mind games with the quarterback, you know, playing the game within the game. And I just feel like um, this scheme and um, 
playing under uh, Coach Pease is going to allow me to have the opportunity to do that. Awesome. Love it. Thank you. No problem. Michael Rossin, ESPN. Bye. Hello again, Duran. It's been <laughs> so long. Uh, I actually want to ask you what you felt like you learned last year. Because last year was the first time you'd been through anything, mm -hmm. coaching change, losing mm -hmm. season, mm -hmm. I, at least since college. What did you actually learn about yourself last year from all that? I mean, honestly, like, we could be here for hours. And I could tell you all the things that I learned from last year. But um, I would say the main thing is just um, – it's a lot of things, but I talk about uh, dealing with younger players. Um, just being in New England, um, it was always a veteran-led team. So, you know, when Tom Brady was doing this and they said do this and Tom Brady did it, like everybody fell in line. And that trickled down from, you know, having great leaders at the top and, you know, just having a veteran-based team. It was never a lot of young guys, you know. Um Last year was the first time, you know, we just in the secondary with just a lot of young guys. Um, I had to learn patience. Um, and I'm not, you know, particularly a, a patient person. I mean, you guys, ask my wife, you guys, ask my kids. It's something that I'm still, <laughs> I'm learning. And you're going to learn that with four kids for sure. Um, but um, patience, you know, learning how to, you know, just keep working working at it like you know it might not happen right then and there but you know you just got to keep going pre progressing and i think um probably the most valuable lesson that i learned was just you know just keep pressing forward you know even when it doesn't look good even when it doesn't feel good um kind of in a funk everything's not going your way nothing's going your way but at the end of the day i mean you have an obligation um not only to the organization, but most importantly to yourself to just keep pressing forward um, because, you know, it's kids out there. It's, you know, fans out there that are kind of looking up um, to us as football players. And it's our duty to never kind of, you know, just fold, fold under that pressure. Just keep going. And eventually, you know, you'll break through and it'll be light at the end of the tunnel. Cool. I appreciate it, Ron. Good seeing you again, man. Good seeing you too, my guy. My bad. Charles Odom, AP. Hi, Deron. Good to meet you. Thanks for doing this. I wanted to um, um, follow up on what you said. I was interested. You kind of took exception to the suggestion that this uh, defense is building from the ground up. Uh, as we get closer to the draft, mm -hmm. a lot of folks are trying to figure out what direction this team should take. Is, uh, is this team um, poised and positioned to, 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 to be competitive um, this season? What did you see as you were making your free agent decision what did you see about this team that made you that that, um, that interested you and made you think it could it could be a, a a factor this season yeah i mean we're just in this league we know one thing i mean it's hard to do anything without a quarterback you know and i mean matt ryan is one of the better quarterbacks in the league um and obviously you know you have an explosive offense with explosive skill players um you know and i mean you just kind of just look at their season there's probably about four or five games that you know they could have won last year, you know, just one possession games that could have went either way. And I mean, if you take that, you know, then you go from four and whatever, I'm sorry, whatever they were to, you know, then they're nine and seven, you know, and then they're a playoff team. So, I mean, the one thing about this league, you know, it's a thin line, a very, very thin line between, you know, a really good team and, and, and a bad team. And I just think like, you know, obviously the pieces are there. I mean, obviously, you got to come in, you got to work. And then, you know, you got this coaching staff that I already raved about that I'm excited to work with. So I just think, you know, is it going to be easy? Heck no, nothing that you want to do is easy in life. But um, I just feel like, you know, the pieces are there and I'm just excited to come in and just work my butt off and, and kind of see where it goes. You guys, um, after after the, the season you just went through, I'm sure you all are, are hoping for some normalcy. And I'm just wondering for you as a newcomer to Atlanta, um, the pushback in the voluntary offseason uh, plans, uh, what does that mean for you right now? How are you <laughs> how are you getting involved, engaged? Uh, well, you know, we're in our obviously we're in our virtual meetings right now. Um, but um, I have a you know a trainer and I'm still training just like I would be training um, if I was in Atlanta doing the off-season program. So, 
I'm just kind of, you know, just worrying about, you know, at this point, all I can do is worry about, you know, learning the defense, being there when the virtual meetings are, and preparing my body for when I get the chance to go there and start practicing and being around the guys. Zach Klein, ABC. Hey, yeah, I just want to follow up what Charles was talking about. You know, when you took over and you left to go to Detroit, you know, how long did it take you to grasp that system and the philosophies? And, mm -hmm. and usually new coaches and their staffs get extra time to be with their mm -hmm. guys. But, you know, that's obviously out, out the door. So I was wondering your concern level, if any, and how long mm -hmm. you expect it to take to just kind of learn this new mm -hmm. system and scheme? Well, I went, when I went from New England to Detroit, um, the, the scheme was very, very similar. Very similar, like very, very identical because obviously, you know, Matty P was the defensive coordinator um, in New England before he went to Detroit. So it wasn't too much, you know, to worry about. And the great thing <laughs> about coming here, Dean Pease was a coordinator in New England as well. So a lot of the scheme, um, while it's not as similar as it was to uh, from Detroit to New England, um, there's a lot of similarities, you know. Verbiage might be a little different, but concepts and, and schematic wise, it's very, very similar. So um, not concerned at all. And honestly, you know, I, I put a lot in the football. I, I, I want to be the best that I can be. Um, I pride myself on being a hard worker. So I'm going to do everything I can, you know, whether it's me next year with the coaches, you know, me next year with the guys, the DBs um, to make sure that, you know, I know the scheme as well as I can so that I can go out there, play fast and be the best player I can um, for the team. And what do you know about the A? Is, is the crew coming? They packing up and getting ready to come? <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're packing up soon. Not now. I have uh, four kids. Oh, I got my, my oldest is in fourth grade, and he's, he's in school. We want to let him finish school. And, I mean, he's playing basketball, football. Then I got a five-year-old who's starting T-ball and, and playing football, too, right now. So we're going to kind of let him finish out the season. Um, but um, we're excited. I mean, um, I don't know too much about the A, but um, I'm excited to learn a lot about it and uh, be involved in the community and not only be just, you know, a football player, but a pillar in the community, you know, to give back, um, to do everything I can to, you know, to continue to help the city grow. Appreciate you. Safe travels. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kelsey Conway, Falcons. Hey, I just wanted to follow up on one quick thing. When you were talking about Dean Pease and how much um, – he utilizes safeties. I was wondering if you could expand a little bit more on that um, and what mm -hmm. specifically your role will be with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the one thing that you never know, you don't know your role. You got to earn your role. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to, you know, doing everything I can to, to earn a role, you know, starting role, you know, that's, that's the goal. And I know that for me to do that, I have to be the best that I can be. I have to be dependable. I have to, you know, know the defense and I have to go out there and make plays when plays come my way. Um, but when you talk about just his role of the safeties, I mean, you just look at it. You know, this guy's coach Rodney Harrison, um, Ed Reed, Eric Weddle, um, you know, Kevin Byard and Kenny Vaccaro. And all of those guys have made a lot of plays in the system. Um, and like I said, you know, these guys are back deep. Um, they're at the line of scrimmage, they're running back deep, you know, they're playing cover three, they're playing cover two, you know, man to man, they're blitzing, showing blitz and getting back. So it's just like, it's a lot going on, you know, you're never in the same spot. You're able to, you know, just play the game within the game, you know, mess with the quarterback a little bit, disguise, show this, then do another thing. And he's just had great success at, you know, developing safety. So I'm just excited about the opportunity, you know, to play in this system um, and obviously learn from him because he's been around a lot of great safeties and there's been a lot of great safeties who have made a lot of plays. So just trying to find a way that I can utilize my skill set to go out there and make some plays as well. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Dila, do you have any follow-ups? No, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Mr. Harmon. Oh, thank you, sir. Any other follow-ups from anybody? Are we set? Oh, I have one, Gabby. If that's yeah, okay. Tori, then I saw Michael had his hand up, so we'll do that. Uh, so I was actually reading up on um, some work that you were doing when you were in Massachusetts a couple of years ago, kind of using mm -hmm. your platform to speak out and support a statewide mm -hmm. education reform bill. And I, I was just 
wondering, you know, why was that something that you wanted to get involved in and, and how proud of that time are you? Uh, that's, that's probably one of my favorite, uh, accomplishments. Um, just because, um, you know, we get a rap as football players and as professional athletes that, you know, we kind of only care about ourselves, but, um, you know, being up there, being surrounded by, you know, great men like Devin McCourty, Jason McCourty, and, you know, Matt Slater, um, you know, that was bigger than football. Like, that's something where I'm going to be able to, you know, tell my kids, you know, and my grandkids that, you know, and while I won Super Bowls, I was also able to get underprivileged schools and underprivileged, you know, school districts, you know, almost a billion dollars in funding, you know, like, that's amazing, you know, just to level the playing field. Um because we all know, you know, certain schools don't have the resources. Um, and, you know, when I walked in a school up there, I mean, it was one room, you know, was the cafeteria, the gym and the classroom, you know, ceilings falling. You know, the building was built in 19, I think it was like 1907, you know, and kids are going to that school. And I think it was 2000, you know, 19, 2018. So. Just saying I was able to, you know, be a part of that and be a part of the funding that able to, you know, level the playing fields is something that, you know, is surreal and something that I'll never forget. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Michael? Yeah, hey, Duran, I, I want to go sort of back to last year a little bit as well, mm-hmm. just but with something completely different. You were so involved with voting rights issues mm-hmm. and with social justice mm-hmm. issues in Detroit last year. When you see the George Floyd verdict yesterday, what went through your mind? And also, I'm going to add a second part of that. Mm-hmm. In Georgia, the Georgia voting rights, the, mm-hmm. the, Georgia, the voting bill in Georgia, what is your reaction mm-hmm. to that as you're actually now mm-hmm. going to be coming mm-hmm. to Georgia? Um, well, I would say my reaction was, you know, justice was served. You know, you know, some people, um, it's, it's crazy, I was actually talking to my wife about this. Some people actually say, you know, it was a victory, but, you know, how can we say anything was a victory when a man lost his wife, you know, I mean, lost his life and where, you know, a daughter lost her father, like fathers, like it's not a victory, but from the same point, like justice was served. And I think it was a point, a start in the right direction, you know, where police are going to have to be accountable for their actions. Um, And, and no means am I saying to being a police officer is an easy job. You know, they're risking their lives each and every day out there to do everything um, to protect us from crime. But at the same day, there has to be a standard. Just like as an NFL player, we have standards. Um, if you're not doing your job the right way, they're going to get you out there and going somebody else is going to do that job. And I just think we have to have a standard that every police officer is upholding that standard. You know, there are some bad apples out there that, you know, give a bad name to the good cops. You know, I have, you know, best friends who are police officers and I know they're out there doing their job the right way each and every day. But at the end of the day, we can't have bad apples because we can't have people losing their lives over senseless acts. And I think um, the more that we can hold these police officers um, accountable for their actions, I think, the more um, safe um, that these communities will feel. And as far as the um, the Georgia voting uh, bill that um, I don't want to sit here and, and act like I am an expert on the bill because I don't know the details of it, um, the exact details, but I know certain things where I know it was like no water or no food can be given out, like it's illegal and stuff now. I just think at the end of the day, um, we got to do whatever we can to get people out to vote. You know, if it's giving them water because the line is long, giving them food because the line is long, then like, we got to do that. We got to understand that, you know, we need like this is a democracy. And for us to be the country that we always talk about being the land of the free, We need everybody voices heard so that we can understand what the true voice of the country is. And I just don't think we need to take stuff away to limit people, you know, from being able to, you know, vote. Um, But I do know um, that there's a lot of pushback on it. And hopefully, and like I said, I'm 
I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not fully educated on the bill. So I can't tell you this is wrong with it or that is wrong with it. But what I will tell you is that we need to always make sure that we're giving everybody the equal opportunity to utilize their voice to vote to make sure that the people are hiring the right people for the job. 